This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. You can help transform this very world, but how? Here at the ranch, we have a tall cottonwood tree. Now, I grew up in western Kansas where cottonwoods abounded along the Arkansas River and where every springtime the air is filled with thousands of wisps of catkins. These are the long flowering clusters which hang from the cottonwood tree and are carried away piece by piece on the breath of the breeze like large dandelion down. And where these seeds are carried, perhaps for many miles on the wings of the wind, they alight on the ground and new cottonwood trees are planted and grow to maturity. And some sunny springtime, they too begin their dispersion of thousands of cottonwood seeds drifting like tiny clouds across the blue skies. And so it is with spiritual truth. God-loving human beings somehow disperse the seeds of spiritual truth far beyond the homes and schools and farms and offices where they live and work. For seeds of truth born on the wings of the Spirit go forth from the life of one single God-knowing man or woman, boy or girl, like the down from a cottonwood tree, far beyond the place where it stands rooted in the soil. By telephone calls, letters, and one life touching another life, and that life in turn touching another, the influence of a good and godly human being is dispersed far beyond the place that person lives. It is in this way that this world will one day be made new by means of the renewed lives and new spirits of ordinary people who in the hands of God become extraordinary people. Years ago I wrote a poem about that. Only transformed individuals can create a transformed world. Only better men and women can fashion a better society. Only advanced citizens can architect an advanced civilization. A professional welder I knew at the time told me, I like that poem so much I'm going to write it on stainless steel so that 2,000 years from now people will still be able to read it. I don't want that poem ever to be lost. And so, on a heavy round plaque of silvery stainless steel, he inscribed that poem with his welding torch. And I have it to this day. And it will be just as true 10,000 years from now, that it is by becoming a spiritually transformed individual human being that you can have your part in the renewing of this world. God has uses for your life far greater than you could ever conceive or begin to imagine. God can use your life for the renewing of this world if you will give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place. Because God loves you. God loves you. You are a son or daughter of this God who has loved you with a love which will not let you go since you were born. And you can play a part in God's purposes, by making yourself available to God for whatever tasks he would have you to do. And all that is contained in the great prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For thus will the world be transformed, declared the Master. You must be born again. And then he said, Go forth into all the world, proclaiming and sharing these wonderful truths of the living love of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God, which this earth was intended and created to be. And Jesus of Nazareth's two great commandments, where you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Certainly spiritual growth requires time, but you can begin it Right here and right now, this very moment, years ago, when President Garfield was the head of Hiram College in Ohio, a man came bringing his son as a student, but asked about a shorter course than the regular one. This boy will never take all those classes, the father said, but he can take a shorter course. Could you arrange it for him? Oh, yes, your son could take a shorter course, replied the college president, Garfield, but it all depends on what you want to make out of him. The father replied, what do you mean, what I want to make out of him? Garfield replied, when God wants to make an oak, he takes a few hundred years. But when he wants to make a squash, it only takes two months. Growing to authentic spiritual greatness will likewise require time and effort. 
but the choice is yours for the making, and all things will begin to become as new for you. You'll discover who you are, why you're here, and where you're going. Certain of life and certain of life eternal as well. Here at the Horseshoe Ranch near Yosemite in the mountains of Northern California, we have a huge old oak tree which at some time in its past suffered from disease and fire. It has a gaping hole in its side. This is the largest oak I have ever seen in my life. And since these oaks easily live two or three hundred years, this one must be nearing the third century of its life on our land. And yet so sturdy it is that one of the guy wires from our shortwave radio antenna is connected to it. This tree has lost many limbs to winds and storms through the centuries. And the huge hole in the center of the trunk is so deep and so high that at six feet five inches in my boots and 230 pounds, I can step into that hole in that tree and stand up straight with plenty of room to spare. It's like going into a wood-paneled closet. Yet despite such a radical injury to this old oak, it's a survivor. It's still alive. It bears in its branches a children's treehouse, and each springtime its limbs flourish with foliage, tens of thousands of fresh green leaves soaking in the mountain sunlight, then acorns by the bushel. Yet so severely has it suffered injury that the trunk, which on an ordinary tree would be solid down to the roots, has been eaten away by fire and disease and decay in its center, and it is held upright by the few inches of wood just under the bark. And through wind and rain, hailstones and snowstorms and forest fires, it has survived to this day. And I can see it from the window of my broadcasting studio, even as I speak into this microphone. Every great human being whom I have ever known is like that old oak. The most noble characters in planetary history have had to suffer and survive many onslaughts of man and nature, disease, infirmity, the deaths of loved ones, business failures, personal tragedies, jealousy, slander and unfairness, abuse and misunderstandings. But despite both insult and injury, great men and women survive because they remain rooted in the rich soils and the living waters of faith and hope and trust in God. So may you live strengthened by deep-rooted faith in the living God, your Father and your friend, the God who loves you and cares for you and has cared for you all of your life. You'll be hurt, but not hopelessly struck but still standing, aflame but alive, wounded but not to the death, and in spite of scars and torn branches and a wound big enough to stand up in, when the showers and sunlight of springtime fall once again upon your barren branches, they will bud with life and new leaves, and you will have made it through another year and another and another still, because your roots are planted in the rich soil and the living waters of faith. If you will thus live your life in living faith, you shall withstand all which comes to pass and stand tall through it all. And through many experiences and tragedies which would have brought a lesser man or woman crashing to the ground and covered with the dust of defeat, if you will thus commit your life to God, you will find sources of strength known only to those heroic souls who survive everything humanity, nature, and the elements can inflict and still stand tall through it all. And you will have not only discovered the source of life abundant in this world, but life eternal in the next, for God will grant you courage and wisdom, perseverance and power, love and joy and enthusiasm, and life will become great for you because you will be strengthened by your deeply rooted commitment to spiritual things, to the things of God, the things which never die. And when you commit your soul to things that never die, you may be assured that your soul itself will never die. For these spiritual things are eternal, and you will live your life as one who has already tasted immortality. Give God your time, and God will give you eternity. Give God your life, and God will give you life everlasting. Give all you are to God. And God will make you more 
than you ever dreamed of being. You will discover the divine delight of living as a son or daughter of the living God, a child of the infinite, a son or daughter of the creator of all that is. And all of that can begin, if you will have the faith to believe it, it can begin for you this very instant. For free literature on the spiritual life, things I've written on these very topics, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man. What's the intention or plan or purpose of the Creator in making human beings so diverse, so different in racial and ethnic backgrounds, and how can we live together in peace on earth and goodwill among human beings as one great spiritual family. Just write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And once again, that mailing address for the free literature is Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.